Happy Arval. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me yet again today. How are you doing? What is Christmas like in Australia? Probably a lot different than here in the States, I imagine. I mean, what's the weather in Sydney right now? 73 degrees. I mean, it is rainy. But damn, that's a beautiful day. Isn't it summertime there, though? 73 degrees in Sydney. Damn. A lot of Americans were wishing they're down under right about now. It's getting real cold over here in Indiana. But, hey, at least I can watch a YouTube video about it. So let's see, let's compare and contrast, you know, differences between Australian Christmas, American Christmas. I'm excited. Hello YouTube, Hello. Candace Moll here with some Australian information for you today. Today I'm going to answer the question that I get asked all the time, which is, what is Christmas like in- I mean, judging from the background, it looks, it looks a lot like American Christmas. We got the Christmas tree, the stockings, even got a fire going. Might not be real. In Australia. I get asked this question. It's probably hot enough you don't need a real fire. Been countless times because I live in the United States. And so today uh -oh. I am going to give you 10. So actually the background is completely irrelevant because she's up here in the United States. Facts about an Australian Christmas. Before I get started, I do need to ask you, have you subscribed to this channel? If you have, welcome yes, back. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah, you very yeah, much yeah, for yeah. subscribing and for watching my videos. I, I hope that you like them and find them helpful. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It helps oh, me okay. out because it helps- I thought she was gonna threaten me. More people to see my videos and it helps <laughs> you out because you can see whenever I put out a new video with Australian info or Australian accent tips. So it's a win-win. <laughs> all right, let's get right on into okay, it. Right. 10 facts about an Australian Christmas. Number one, the most important thing that you need to know about an Australian Christmas is that it is hot. Australia is in the Southern Hemisphere, putting it right at the bottom of the map. So that means that when the top of the map has cold weather, the <laughs> bottom of the map has warm weather. Simple enough for an American to understand. So Christmas actually- Top, hot. No, top, cold, bottom, hot. Falls right in the middle of an Australian summer. And actually Christmas Day is very <laughs> close to the longest day of the year. Because you know summer days oh, are longer. Fine. So it, it'll get light, well, I don't know, 5 a.m. maybe. And it'll get dark usually at about 9-ish. Wow, 9 p.m.? Oh my area. god. So, hot weather. That was a very long day. Christmas time. What this means, bringing... So it's the opposite, obviously. It's the opposite here right now. It's like extremely depressing. It gets dark at like four o'clock. us to number two. More like five o'clock. Two on this list is that Christmas actually coincides with school summer holidays. So the summer holidays much- Summer holidays. What a weird, man, I didn't even think about that. Okay, you guys are on summer vacation, but how long is your summer vacation? It's not as long, is it? like in other countries, the summer break or the summer vacation is the longest. You know, I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of unfortunate for you guys. Cause here in America, it gives like Christmas and New Year's gives, you know, the school system and everything, a reason to have a nice long break. So you, you have the summer break, which is the, at the opposite time of the year. And you go back to school for a little while through fall. Then you get a nice, you know, like 10 day long break for Christmas time and New Year's. It's a little unfortunate that you guys have Christmas and summer break at the same time. That's kind of like having, you know, the kid that has his birthday on Christmas. It's not, it's not ideal, because then <laughs> you only get one a year instead of separating them. Vacation, it's hmm. in between the end of one school year. And the now I'm wondering how long your winter break is at school. Do you even have one? Beginning of another school year. So for Australian schools, that means that school lets out about a week before Christmas, and then the kids are on holidays for around about six weeks, depending on the school. They will usually go back to school around about the first week of February. So Man, that's why you guys are so smart, huh? 
Y'all are just so smart down under because you only take a six week summer vacation. So how this affects. At the same time though, even though it, it, it's maybe it's not ideal, it would still be really exciting to get to the summer break. And you know, Christmas is coming up. I mean, you get all that excitement all at once is the flip side of the coin. So that's kind of cool. Christmas is that you go on holidays, you've got about a week of mad Christmas preparation with your family. Then you have Christmas day, get your presents, and you have all summer holidays to play with them. This was one of the best things point. <laughs> about growing up as a kid in Australia. Very fun to play with your toys for the whole summer. You know what I'm jealous of right now? Every winter, I get bronchitis, which I have right now. And I need to go get me some antibiotics because my nose gets all stuffed up and it drains and it's gross. If I was living down under, I wouldn't have that problem right now. That's probably what I'm most jealous of, Australian Christmas. I wouldn't have bronchitis. Holiday. Number three, I've written down decorations, but there's a few things within this topic. Obviously, as far as movies and things are concerned and the way that other parts of the world might celebrate, a lot of the decorations revolve around snow. We still right. do all of those. Now that she mentioned movies, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering what kind of traditional Australian Christmas movies there are. There's so many traditional American Christmas movies. There's got to be some good Australian yes. ones. Huh? All of the decorations that are traditional Christmas decorations in other countries, Australia will still do the same things. We'll put up a Christmas tree. We used okay. to get like fake snow in a can and what? spray it on the windows so that it looked like frost on ah. the windows. Pain in the bum to get off after Christmas. We only did it for a couple of 100 years. 100 degrees outside, you got frost on the oh, window. My mum vetoed that idea. Families might throw cotton wool at the tree to simulate snow, or there might be fake snow. You know, we need to do that here too. Because there's no snow inside. You know, we need some fake snow in a can and cotton at balls. At a big Christmas event or something like that. So, yes, snow is still incorporated into the Christmas decor, That's even fun. though it's hot at Christmas time. I don't know if this is a thing in the whole country. It's really funny to think it's still like kind of a cold, wintry themed holiday for you guys, even though it's summertime. But certainly in South Australia, we actually go to a Christmas tree farm to chop down a tree. And again, cool. I'm sure that that's not a standard. I'm sure that that is just one option of Christmas trees. It's probably not as miserable, but being miserable is part of the, um, part of the experience in America. You know, go out with the family. Not a lot of families do this anymore. Most just buy a fake tree, but. I, I think it's cool. Go out with the family, freeze. You know, you got the hacksaw. Go find a tree, walk around a farm for two hours. It's a great experience. Great learning experience for children. That you have living in Australia. So some people might have a fake tree from the shop. Some people might go to a hardware store or a garden nursery shop and buy a tree that's already been- You know, most people, I would say, most people who get real trees here in America get them from the Boy Scouts. Kind of a random fact right there. The Boy Scouts set up all these Christmas tree things in parking lots where you can go get a tree. Chop down, but in my family, we would drive up into the hills, go to a, a Christmas tree farm where they specifically grow a certain type of tree all year, and then you pay them some money, and then you go out and you chop down a tree and you drag it home. So when you get home, this is very uh, yes. important. My husband was horrified. What a beautiful day it was out there on the Australian Christmas first farm. First time he saw us do this. Oh no. Wazoni, tukwa tukiri wachai saa tano. Before we would drink tea at 11. Because you have literally taken a tree from a foresty or a bush type area, when you get at home, you've got to spray that thing down so that all of the spiders die. I'm sorry to people who like spiders, but if you don't No, do I don't that, like spiders, but that's that's disgusting to think about. Then when you put the presents underneath it, you're probably gonna get spiders in your Christmas presents. 
And that's not really fun when you're six. Never happened to us because we sprayed the tree down. The same of course, you always gotta be wary of spiders, no matter what you're doing in Australia. Eventually, you spray it down outside before you take it into the house. Leave it 10 minutes, good give tip. it a good shake and you see all the fall off. It's a bit barbaric, isn't it? For number four, I want to- No, I say, you know, I mean, spiders, I guess they kill other insects and stuff. They're cool for that, but I have no problem killing them. But that's, that's just scary to think. You shake it and all the dead spiders come out. You talk about the events that will lead up Merry to Christmas. Christmas. The most common Christmas event in the lead up to Christmas in Australia is Carols by Candlelight. So what this is, is an outdoor concert and every state or every major city oh, I need to look this up. City will have a big Carols by Candlelight, often How televised. How cool is that? But then every community will have their own community Carols by Candlelight, often put on by churches or they'll be put on by the city council. This will consist of a show basically with performers or singers singing Christmas carols. They'll have little skits or whatever with with Santa arriving and donating presents. We don't have we don't have this. And families will attend with a picnic set up. <laughs> and the idea is that Sorry. everyone lights a candle Gosh. while they're singing Christmas carols. You get a candle, light that baby up, <laughs> hold it up, and sing Christmas carols. Oh boy! And there will be many, many opportunities to join in this tradition <clears throat> throughout the country, whether it's a. <clears throat> it might be bushfire season, but. You still gotta light the candles for Christmas. Small community version, or whether it's a large God. statewide televised version. So number five, I wanted to touch on the tradition that is Christmas as a whole. Up until this point, okay. I've been talking about things or events that every Australian family will have the option of participating in, whether that's community events or decorations in the shops or things like that. When you think about a typical Australian family, it's important to note that Australia is a very multicultural nation mm -hmm. and the more time that goes on, of course, the more people that immigrate to Australia and they bring their wonderful cultures from different countries. Okay. So given that Christmas is traditionally a Christian celebration, not yes. every Australian family will choose to celebrate Christmas. It Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa to you. Even though it That's a commercial we used to have here in the States. I don't know if you guys have that is obviously also a bit of a whole Hold off. Okay. I just coughed out two of my lungs, so I don't think I have any left. So hopefully I don't cough anymore. Mark holiday now. And you don't need to be religious or you don't need to be Christian or Catholic to participate in the celebration. There are families who don't celebrate Christmas at all. They will have their own religious holidays to celebrate around about the same time or they just mm. choose not to because it doesn't coincide with what they believe. But then yeah. this will... I do feel like Christmas is... <clears throat> it's almost... It's like so ubiquitous here in America. I guess kind of like what she's saying. You know, it's, I mean, obviously it's a religious holiday, but it really is open to anybody. Also affect when somebody might celebrate Christmas and how they might. I think no matter what religion you are, your kids are going to be like, uh, no, we're doing this Christmas thing. We're doing it. All these other kids get, they wake up in a bunch of presents. I want the fat man to deliver me some presents. We're doing it celebrate Christmas within their family. So please know that as I continue through this, this is coming from the point of view of someone who has a heritage that comes from Europe and the UK. My mum's from Scotland, my dad's family were all from Germany. So what might be my cool. typical Australian Christmas might look a little bit different to somebody else's Australian Christmas. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Okay, so I got this it. also it's leads in my mind. me into when Christmas will be celebrated. 
Now, I was very lucky growing up because as I mentioned, I had those two cultures within my childhood. So the European or the German side of things, we would celebrate on Christmas Eve with my grandparents. But okay. my mum's side being Scottish from the UK, we would celebrate on Christmas morning. So as a kid, I got two Christmases, which I think is quite common. Wait, you're telling me that some cultures don't celebrate Christmas on Christmas morning? <clears throat> they do it on Christmas Eve? And for a lot of kids in Australia, given the mishmash of different cultures, which is really fun. Now, I do believe that majority of Australian families that do celebrate Christmas probably do the Christmas morning thing purely based on the- I assume you celebrate- most of you celebrate Christmas on Christmas. British tradition. Remember that Australia was settled- And it's gotta be in the morning, because once again, the kids aren't gonna wait around all day to open presents. First thing, run downstairs or run, you know, down the hall. <laughs> Whatever kind of house layout you got. By the British. Open the presents. So that's where a lot of our tradition will come from. A lot of the time. So that means that Christmas Day will be the main day to celebrate rather than Christmas Eve. And it also means that the main time of day that the celebration will take place will be a Christmas lunch with the extended family. Uh. Everyone's <laughs> favorite thing. Oh, so that no. brings me to number six. Often activities that so y'all have more of a Christmas lunch than a Christmas dinner a lot of people It's Christmas dinner here in the States, but a lot of people eat it pretty early. It's kind of like it's kind of that way with Thanksgiving too where They eat it kind of early maybe around three and Just skip like combine all the meals into one gigantic meal people will do on Christmas Day include going to the beach <laughs> or playing cricket on Look the beach. Look at that. Now that's something you're not going to see here in America. <laughs> it's it's surreal. For example, really big <laughs> activities to do on Christmas Day. Yes. And again, it all the comes sandy down snowman. To the, summer. the sandman. Time Christmas. That's so genius. the lunch might be an outdoor barbecue, it might be a barbecue or a picnic on the beach. Or it might, you know, be in someone's house, but there will most often be some type of out. Oh man, Christmas on the beach, you guys don't know how good you got it sometimes. Door activity, even if it's just, I remember a lot of years we would just set the table up outside and eat outside. That brings me to number seven, which is the food that is served at Christmas time. Now, again, with the British influence. As a kid, you know, the presents are top priority. As an adult, food is top priority. A lot of families will do the traditional roast, whether it's a turkey. Hi, Mark Barden at Sandy Hook oh, Thomas here. Oh man, this got depressing. When the gunman shot his way into. You're a chicken. We're trying to be, you know, cheery. In roast veggies, etc. But a big thing that a lot of Australian families will partake in is the seafood thing. Apparently, in the few days before Christmas, Australians will purchase 10 times more prawns than they would at any other time of the year. A prawn is a shellfish that is very much like a shrimp. We don't have shrimp in Australia generally, we have prawns. They're Wait, do I know you guys don't put shrimp on the Barbie. But do you put prawns on the Barbie? Delicious. You can barbecue them, but often they will be served in the form of a prawn cocktail, which is cold. Other things that families might choose to eat on Christmas Day, anything you can barbecue. So for an Australian, that would look like snags or sausages, rissoles or meat patties. Sounds different amazing. Different types of salads and things like that. And very summery dessert is pavlova or trifle. Delicious. And of course, summertime drinks. Beer is a big <laughs> thing on Christmas or any type of summer drink that you might like to drink. Number eight. Americans love to drink beer in the winter too. Let's. But I'd say eggnog is like the most iconic alcoholic Christmas drink here. Let's talk about the warm. big man himself, Santa Claus. Santa is a big part of Christmas <laughs> in Australia. He is also known as Father Christmas. He will be in shopping centers so that you can go and sit on his lap, although I don't know if they do that anymore. I've is he in like a tank top and flip flops? I always thought that's a bit weird, but you can go and get your photo <laughs> taken with Santa. Tell him what you want for Christmas. And it's only as weird as the Santa 
as Santa is weird, you know? However weird Santa is, that's how weird it is to sit on his lap. And as with most other countries, all of the story around Santa is the same. You might ask, how do you expect Santa to get there with no snow? That's easy. Mm. Christmas magic. <laughs> Typically, kids will still put out biscuits or cookies and a glass of milk for Santa. Some families might put out beer for Santa, um, <laughs> if that's what mum and dad like to drink. But most of the time... Mum and dad? Who cares what they like? It's about Santa. Time, it's not Santa does like beer. Alcoholic because Santa has to drive his sleigh. Oh, oh yeah, and there'll be carrots time. for the reindeer too. <laughs> I did read! Some people talk about Santa changing out the reindeer for kangaroos. That's no. I've never heard of that. It we would do... probably go faster though. Goddamn, kangaroos are fast as hell. If you give gifts or presents in Australia at Christmas time, if you have a small family, then everyone will get a gift or two. Or for the large extended families, often you'll do a secret Santa. And you'll do this in the workplace too, if you have a end of year Christmas. Same here party or something you might do a secret santa if you don't know what that is it's a game you pull a name out of a hat and whoever's name you pull you have to buy that person a present and they don't know it's from you a lot of people might do that in their large families too because let's face it christmas gets expensive man that's a that's a good tip right there <clears throat> holy crap the amount of presents especially when you start marrying and people start getting married and stuff there's so many people. So, number... It's not even just about how expensive it is. It's like, oh my god, I need to just... It's like, it becomes... I feel like I need a office manager to manage... You know, did I buy this person a gift yet? I forget. I've bought 35 gifts. And talking about saving money is Boxing Day. I don't believe they do this in the no. US, which is where I am now. I didn't get to go home for Christmas this year. That's why I'm wearing long sleeves. I got stuck, much like the rest of the world. So we'll be doing a Zoom Christmas this year. Boxing Day. But we're still here, aren't we? So we're doing okay. Boxing Day actually... I still don't know what Boxing Day is. ...is a, a European or a British tradition, I believe, where the wealthier families in the old times would give a gift or a box, box of money or a box with a gift in it, to their servants to say thank you for the work that you've done this year. So Boxing Day was a tradition that was brought to Australia by the British. Now... Wait, so Boxing Day is just like a second Christmas? You just get another gift? <clears throat> you get your servants a gift. Boxing Day, oh, it's on the 26th of December. So it's the day after It's the Christmas 26th day. of December. And now for Australians, it's just another public holiday. It's kind of like a day of rest after the madness that is Christmas Day. But there we are a do. few traditional things oh, that yeah. will happen on Boxing Day every year, the day after Christmas. The first, speaking of saving money, is Boxing Day sales. So it is a public holiday, meaning mm. that most businesses will be closed. But major retailers or major shopping malls will be open for the beginning of one of the biggest sales of the year. Really? It's kind of like Black Friday here in America, huh? That's interesting. You don't think of like day after Christmas as being a time where stuff goes on sale, really, other than Christmas candy. So they'll have Boxing Day sales, and that's where all of the stores or the shops can offload their Christmas stock. Another thing that families might like okay. to do on Boxing Day, you might go to the beach again with the family, or you might, you know, do a picnic in a park or something like that. Or a big thing in Australian families is it revolves around sports. So there's no boxing match. Oh, wait, there's sports? sports. There's a couple of major events that boxing? every year will happen on December 26th. The first is the Boxing Day Test Cricket Match. So if you're a mm. big cricket family, then you might just stay home and watch the cricket all day. I'm not a cricket person. I never did that. But another sporting event that happens is the Sydney to Hobart Yacht Race. Which is very so if dad's a big cricket fan, the whole family's got to stay home and watch cricket. Exciting to watch on the telly. <laughs> Lots of boats. Mm. So, a few things that families might do on Boxing Day. But it is important to note that it's just another public holiday. That is what we do for Christmas in Australia.
Next year, if I get to go, maybe I'll whip out the camera and actually film some of these things for you and put together one of those videos. That was a great list. Glad I subscribed. Um, go check out her channel, Candace Mole. That was really fun. Very interesting. <clears throat> oh man, it's coming up. It's coming up. And I think I still have 50 more gifts to buy. So I better get to it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys are doing good. I'll see you tomorrow.